So in today's video, we are going to understand what is ViewSet in Django REST framework. Then we are going to understand what are the actions that ViewSet provide us, which will help us in writing the logic. Okay. Then we are going to understand what is URL routers, which will help us to reduce the line of code in the URL.py because we don't have to specify URLs for each and every method or the API that we write over there. Then finally, we are going to write, do the practical and write the code for this. Okay. So let's first go and understand what is ViewSet in Django REST framework. So ViewSet class is simply a normal base uh, type of a class based view only. So till now, what we used to do, we used to write um, get method, post method, like this method in the class based view. But in the view set, we don't write get and post method. Instead, we write list method, create method. Okay. So there are different, different type of method that uh, view set provide us, which are, as you can see over here, we have defined one of the uh, view set, user view set, which has been inherited from the view set at view set. Okay. So it provides six different method. The first one is a list method. And this method is used to get all the data from the database. And there is a create method, which is used to create the new entry in the database. And there is a retrieve method. Uh, which has the PK as one of the um, argument which help us to get a single um, data from the database. There is an update method which also has the PK because we want to update one of the entry. And then part um, this update for the whole update. We can't, we can't update single single data over there. If you want to update single single data partial for that we have a uh, method called partial underscore update. Okay. And then uh, lastly there is a method called destroy which is used to delete the, uh, the entry in the database. Okay, these are all the type of method that ViewSet provide us. And apart from this, there is a um, action that ViewSet provide us. So these are the different different kind of action. The first one is a base name. This is the, the name of the URL which we have created uh, in the router file. Okay, um, if you don't understand this thing, don't worry. We are going to understand this practically in the code. So for now, understand that these are the different different kind of action that ViewSet provide us. Okay, and there is an action. Uh, which tell us that um, this um, call is from which uh, method over here. So for example, uh, let me make more clear for this. So for example, we want to get, uh, understand get permission class. Okay, so we are going to call the get permission class. But in get permission, if you want to understand that this call is coming from which of the different method that we specified earlier. So for that, uh, all of these actions will uh, come and uh, play a hand, uh, handy role over here. So for example, in this, if you can see, we have used if server action is equal to list. So in the action, we'll get which kind of a um, method we are calling over here. So if the action is list, then we want permission class is authenticated or else is admin user. Okay. So this is the, uh, this all the action help us to write the um, logic in the code, make the logic better. Okay. We'll understand what are the uh, outcome, what are, what will be the uh, print of each and every of this uh, action over here in the code. Meanwhile, you just understand these are the variable that our user action providers. Okay, so now we will be understanding the router. The, um, the resource routing allow you to quickly declare all the common routes for the given resourceful, uh, resourceful controller. Instead of declaring single route for an index, this means that instead of declaring each and every URL one by one, one by one, one by one, we can use the router which will um, understand what is the view and it will automatically assign all the URL um, in the uh, URL PR file. Okay, so how will you do this? The syntax is for that. We will first import uh, routers from Rational School framework. Then we declare the default router. There are two uh, major router: default router and simple router. There is no much. Uh, uh, there is no much difference between them. Just you can use any one of them. So for this example, we are using default router, and you can make your own custom router if you if you want to. Okay. So once you have um, initiated the default router, we will be registering the view set that we have defined in our view file. So router to register the this name is the API name. So what do you want the um, like endpoint for this thing? So if users, then uh, at the end it will come users dot uh, slash user dot uh, slash create users slash update. That all kind of endpoint will come. So the base main endpoint will be users, which you defined over here. Okay. Then the URL pattern we have to specify include routers dot URL and all the uh, uh, URL will automatically get now uh, specified. Okay, so now let's uh, go and jump to the ID and understand how this all thing works over here. So we are back to our favorite ID, Visual Studio Code over here. So till now we have created four different kind of CRUD operations over here. First one was function based uh, CRUD operation. Second one was function based API view CRUD operation. Third one was class based view CRUD operation. And the fourth one was class based API view CRUD operation. 
Today we are going to create the fifth type of CRUD operation view set um if, uh, view CRUD operation okay so let's create the view for that it is view set underscore view dot py okay so let's start writing and making some import uh, import over here and start writing the code for that so let's first make the import so from um, rest um, underscore framework import view set okay so let's create the class class student view set then let's import the view set dot um view set okay so we have made the class over here so uh, as we learned earlier that there are uh, six different types of the method that we are um, we'll be creating over here for the crowd operation so let's start writing that so i have already written so that i don't waste your time because it's pretty simple so this first one is the list method over here it uh, required the student object and the student model serializer so let's make some import first so let's do the import um import will be yeah so we have created the response um response over your view set student and student model serializer and uh, uh, this other serializer which we'll be using later okay so the first one was the list um part so how is how does it work since we know that in the list part we we pass the all the data in the database to the front end or other application people okay so we are getting the all the data then we're passing that data to the model serializer and manipulate it through because there are many multiple uh, student object over here and we are getting the uh, passing uh, returning the response of, of that okay so now let's create the uh, other method also so the second one word was retrieve method over here in retrieve what does it what uh, what does it happen over here in the retrieve we get the pk because we need to uh, retrieve one of the data okay so let's make some changes yeah so we get on the pk over here we uh, get the student model of that id we pass that uh, student to the student model sales and pass the data so now since we got all the data and the single data it's time to create the data so for that we use the create method over here so for the create method what we write we write um, create method over here and we in request we get all of the data that we want to create the student model sale as a data equal to requested data then we uh, see that our student is valid so we do the validation check if the if it is valid we save the data and pass the data as a response or if we pass the uh, error as a response so since we created the data now we need to update the data so we'll be using the partial update over here because we want to create the and do the partial updates so in the partial update we get the request in pk we first get the student object we pass the student object and what data we want to update and partial equal to true if it is valid then we save the data and pass the response as the data if it is not valid then we pass the response error as the data then the last one is the destroy because if you want to create delete some data we use the destroy method in this we get the pk using pk we get the student model to delete that student model and we pass uh, the message that the data has been deleted okay so since we have created all the list method over here okay so now we'll be importing the swagger to make the to automate the api documentation over here so please guys if you have not watched the uh, swagger video that i taught um, that i taught earlier and uh, before this video please watch that video because it helps the developer a lot to write their automate their um, api documentation and see how does the api work okay so i'll be uh, posting that video in the i button please do watch that video so now let me bring the um, uh, swagger over here so let me import swagger so i have imported the swagger let me also import the swagger auto schema so i have imported the swagger auto schema over here so um, for the request body we are using the same sale as a student model sale as the, and for the response also we are using the same part we need to make some changes but i'll show you what this we need to make so let's go to the um, id and for the local slash swagger as you can see there are no urls over here why I think some of you might have guessed it properly because we are not specified in the URL. Still, in the URL, we need to specify what URL we'll be using. So for that, we'll be using the router URL over here. So we need to initiate the router URL for first. So for that, router equal to default router. We have done the initialization. Now we need to register the router. So for that, router dot register. We need to give the API name over here. So for that, student. Uh, API. Now we need to specify for for which view set we are using. So for for that we need to specify the view set. We need to import the view set. Let's import the view set. View set dot in the class now. Student uh, view set. Now we need to give the base name. As I told you, the base name will be used to 
which is in one of the action of the view set. So let's give the student as a base name. So since now we have registered the router, we need to include this router inside the URL pattern. So for that, let's in, uh, import the include and we'll create one more um, URL which will be um, view set URLs and let uncomment. We don't need to, we don't need to specify the um, URL API over here. So let's include the router, include inside this router dot URLs. So now we have you know, included, the, included the URLs in the URLs pattern. Let's go back to the swagger and check. Let's uh, refresh. And as you can see, all the method has been come over here. As you can see, the get method, push method, get method with the ID, uh, patch method with the ID, delete method with the ID. But there will be some problem. The get method will work perfectly if you execute. As you can see, all the data is coming over here. For the push method, there is no um, request body in over here because um, it, it does not know which request body to use. So for that, what we need to do, we need to come in the code over here. Uh, then what we need to do is um, for the create part, we need to specify the um, swagger auto schema. So let's come, let's write the, for the create part, let's uh, show the uh, auto schema. We don't need to specify the um, method type because it all, all, automatically um, compare and understand it is a push method. So if you come back again to the swagger part now, if you do the refresh, as you can see, the push method has the request and the response type over here. Same we need to, we need to do with the push method also. Sorry, patch method also. So we'll take this part. Okay, and we'll copy paste in the partial update also. Let's make for the partial update as well. Um, okay, we'll remove this name. It will be patch or put and it will be put method. It will be patch. Okay, let's go back to the swagger and check. Patch, as you can see, it is coming same again properly. Now for the delete method, we have already created the serializer in a uh, earlier video. We'll be using that same serializer and the swagger over here. So for that, what we'll be doing, we'll be passing the, and the destroy method, we'll be passing the delete method. Over here, as you can see, we are not passing the request um, serializer over here because as you can see in the swagger, uh, it automatically takes the ID as a request and we only need to specify the response part over here. So for the response only we are passing the serializer and if you go back and do the refresh part and as you can see in the request uh, response part in the delete we are getting. So now let's test each and every one. So let's create one more entry. So for that our uh, name one more entry, some role and if you execute it, it is working perfectly fine with ID and the name and role field. If you want to uh, test it is the ID present, so 33, we'll go in the get ID and we'll write the 33, execute. As you can see, we're getting the data over here. So now if you want to update the 33 part, let's change the name for that. So we'll come in the patch method. In the ID, we'll specify 33 ID and what name we need to give, um, new name, same role. Okay, same role. Huh. Then we'll do the execute. As you can see, the data has been updated. If you want to confirm, we'll come uh, again in the get and we'll execute again the get. As you can see, the name um, the name has been new name and the role has been some bool. I don't know what, but uh, some bool. If you want to delete this 33 ID as we don't like some bool, some the name over here. So we'll come in the delete method, try it out and write the ID name and do the execute. And as you can see, the data has been deleted. Okay, so this is the simple view set um, CRUD operation over here with the Swagger implementation so that you don't have to uh, write the API documentation and you can give this API documentation to any person they will understand this is the um, API uh, documentation they have to refer to. Okay, I hope you like the video. Please press the like button if you like the video. Comment your thought uh, in the comment section. Share this video with your friends so that they, they, they would gain some new knowledge. Okay, subscribe to the channel because it helps me a lot. It gives me, it gives me so much of motivation to uh, make such videos for you. Please take care of yourself. We'll see, meet in the next video. Till then, take care.